All right, it's time to pick up where I left off. <laughs> so um, I recorded a very long video talking about things that I had been watching. And I went through all of the major streaming services except for Netflix. I even mentioned one movie that I saw in the theater. Don't know if that will be happening again anytime soon. But regardless, I figured I'd talk about some of the things that I've watched and see what you guys think. Um, I would like to mention that um, I've stated this already that I've been home a lot more than usual. So future videos like this probably won't require two parts because I won't have so much time on my hands, but it is what it is. So let's see, what have I been watching on Netflix lately? So I was waiting for, um, I think was it the third season? No, I did watch the third season of Scissor 7 and then they made a movie. Did I see the movie? No, I'm waiting for the movie. That's right. So I saw the third season of Scissor 7 and I'm waiting for the movie. That's a, that's an anime original that they have. It's about a um, assassin. He's not really good at killing people, but not because he's not really good. Like he is really good. He just doesn't want to kill people. He doesn't want to be an assassin, but the assassin is kind of like who he was in his past life, but not really past life. I, you know, I'm not explaining this very well. The point is, <laughs> it's one of my favorite enemies that comes on Netflix and I'm waiting for the movie to come out because I just finished um, to break. So the other thing, <laughs> um, I was waiting for season three of Hilda to come out only to find out that they did a movie, um, Hilda and the Mountain King. So I, I still think they're going to do season three of Hilda, but they kind of did this movie, I guess, to bridge the gap between season two, season three, because at the end of the last season, Hilda has turned into a troll and that just won't do. So I'm not giving any spoilers here, but Hilda and the Mountain King addresses, you know, her being transformed and all that jazz. And so by the end of the movie, they could, you know, end it there or they could lead into the third season, which I think is what they're going to do is lead into the third season. And so, again, this is animation that I'm talking about, not anime, but animation. And this is based off of a graphic novel series. I love the animation for this series. Um, this one is not actually meant for adults. Like it's um, it's a family type show. It's, it's for kids or whatever. But um, if you're a fan of animation like I am, that don't stop you don't stop me. <laughs> so um, Scissor 7 is for the adults, but anyone can enjoy Hilda. <laughs> so Hilda and the Mountain King movie, um, I finished that and so I'm just awaiting season three. All right. Um, okay, so the next two things that I'm going to talk about go together, but they are separate, I guess. I may, I can't remember if I mentioned this in a, in a previous video or not, but um, he there were two he-man series that came out on netflix he-man revelations and he-man and the masters of the universe so he-man revelations is supposed to be kind of a more traditional take on he-man um more like for adult viewers um everybody was really kind of hyping it because sarah michelle geller was going to play the voice of tila and they were bringing in all, all this different talent and this was um kevin smith's you know baby or whatever and so when it had originally come out, I was basically telling people to stop boohooing and whining because a lot of people were upset that the story seemed to be more about Tila than He-Man. And so um, I still stick by that. However, <laughs> the series did not get better. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess this was season two. I don't, I don't know if, this, if it's over or not. I would be okay with it being over. I mean, if it comes back, I guess I'll watch it. It's one of those things where I've watched as much of it as I have. I feel kind of obligated to at least see what else would come out, but I'm hoping nothing else comes out because it wasn't good. Like I wanted it to be good. I really did, but ugh, I just don't know where they were going with these stories. I mean, some of the stuff that they did and the voice acting, these are entertainers that I enjoy, but I did not enjoy them in this. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar. I do not think she should have been the voice of Tila. Nothing against Alicia Silverstone, but why was she He-Man's mom? I don't know. I mean, she didn't 
I don't think she was as bad in terms of casting for that, but I was just like, I feel like they just wanted the name, you know? I mean, I don't feel like her voice added or took anything away from the character, so I'm not, like, bashing her performance in any way, but I'm just like, maybe if they didn't spend so much money on getting these actors that they wanted for the voice work, they could have developed the story a little bit better. But then again, I feel like that's maybe an insult to Kevin Smith because he probably wrote a lot of this. I didn't pay attention to the credits because I didn't care. The point is, I wanted it to be better than it was. I have absolutely no problem with them taking a more feminist approach to the He-Man universe, which is what I feel like a lot of people was complaining about. So that's not my complaint. My complaint was I just didn't like the story. I absolutely loved what they did with Orko. I mean, I could have just watched an Orko show and been happy with that. The first season and what they did with Evelyn, I just, I was so impressed by that. And then what they did in the next season, I was just like, are you kidding me? I just wasted time watching that. So these are just, you know, my fangirl opinions. They mean nothing, but I was just like, come on. I mean, anyway, so that was He-Man Revelations. I started with that one because they came out, like I said, the same time as the other He-Man of the He-Man show was He-Man's and Masters of the Universe. Now, this show is geared more towards children. It's done more in the style of, say, like a, um, oh my goodness, what's the, the Power Rangers type show. And so when I saw that, me and my husband both were like, we will never watch that garbage. It looks ridiculous. Let the teeny boppers of 2022 enjoy that. But <laughs> like we were very judgmental about that show. We were being very elitist and snooty and just all the worst ideas that you have when you think of fangirls and fanboys. That was us. Well, after we were disappointed with the He-Man <laughs> Revelations show, we're like, we should check out that other He-Man show just to see. I mean, it, we figured it couldn't be worse. Like if it even if it was horrible, it would have just been like, yeah, another one that's not so great. But once we started to watch it, it was not horrible. Like I am still baffled right now that I enjoyed the He-Man and Masters of the Universe kid series more than the Revelation series. I mean, it had it had really cool storylines, the characters, the the villains and the heroes. I mean, it had comedy. <laughs> I mean, I don't. <laughs> I am still baffled that I liked this show. I did not want to like this show, but I liked it. And I'm looking forward to another season. I don't know if they have another season in the works, but I'm, I'm all for it. So, you know, me and my love of animation is just sometimes surprising, sometimes heartbreakingly disappointing. And then you have shows like this and I'm just like, and to think I wasn't even gonna watch it. Well, all right, let's see. What else have I watched? I, I watched the end of Cable Girls. <laughs> Cable Girls was a long running, um, um, wasn't a telenovela, but it was um, a Hispanic, um, Spanish speaking drama. Um, I believe it was, um, is, it, is it Spanish or? I, I never know the origins of some of these shows. Like some of them come from Mexico, some of them come from Spain, some of them, you know, come from other Spanish speaking countries at Colombia, different things. I, I don't know, Colombia, I just think I just threw that out, totally made it. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that I never am conscientious enough to check out to see like where these shows are coming from. And that's on me, despite that the story takes place in Madrid and um, kind of during um, war times or whatever. And we watch these cable girls develop from being just that, you know, cable operators to being revolutionaries by the end. And um, I thought the end of the series was very fitting, um, tragic and all that jazz, but just kind of what you expected. I mean, after everything that they went through, I honestly, I think I said to my husband at one point, if every one of these people is alive by the end of this, this all would have been just stupid. And that's not what happened. I mean, it was, it made sense. Stories like this, where there's all this, you know, trauma and trial and struggle and backstabbing and conniving and espionage and all this kind of stuff. And then at the end, everybody walks into the sunset. You're just like, that's not realistic. 
but that's not the way this story ended and I applaud them for that I mean having it in exactly the way it did was maybe a little um, dramatic but it was very fitting I thought very fitting and so um, I enjoyed Cable Girls it was definitely outside my norm I've been trying to expand you know myself not just fall into the same categories I mean if I did not expand myself whenever I filmed these it would just be about anime sci-fi and fantasy and that's it because those are my go-to's but I do try other things just to expand myself and a lot of times I am pleasantly surprised um sometimes I'm not I mean a man was supposed to be my go-to and it didn't work out the way I thought it would. So uh, let's see here. Um, so the next thing I watched was Never Have I Ever. Been meaning to check this out for a while. This was um, one of the uh, um, TV creations by, I always, I always say her name wrong, so forgive me. I'll put it on the screen, but I think it's Mindy Kaling is how you pronounce it. Everybody knows her from The Office and then she had her Mindy show and she's like a powerhouse in you know Hollywood now and so I know she has a show that she developed for um, HBO and I think I may check that one out on HBO Max at some point but this one was on Netflix and it's um even though you know some of the content is mature but it's not like adult mature you know it's just not like kindergartner or elementary school kids like it's it actually I think takes place in middle school or no 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 they're not why did I say middle school? What is wrong with me? Oh my goodness, this would be highly inappropriate for middle schoolers. No, it, it takes place with these kids in high school. And I, it's, it's so funny how they, you know, film shows like this for high school and they have actors who are clearly like in their 30s playing these teenagers. Um, some of them are, are, you know, closer in age and they do a better job of passing. But the point is you're not really supposed to be tricked into believing that these people are teenagers. If they're good at acting, then you fall into the character and you know you go for it. And I feel like pretty much everyone on the show is a pretty good actor and they can't help the fact that they look 30 because they are in fact 30. So <laughs> with that said, um, I enjoyed the show. It, it wasn't what I expected, but not because I had a particular expectation of it. All I knew was supposed to be about an Indian girl and um, she's in love with some jock who doesn't know she exists and she propositions him for sex. I know that sounds really bad, but it's not that bad when you actually watch it. But then when you actually watch the show, you realize that's just the very surface of it. This show deals a lot with grief and loss and identity and um, you know a lot of different um, challenging topics. Um, <laughs> So it's a very interesting show. It's what a lot of people, you know, refer to as woke and things like that. Um, whatever terminology you want to apply to it that suits you, that's fine with me. But um, I, I enjoyed it. It's, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, some, so much of it I could relate to. And then the little stuff that I couldn't relate to wasn't unrealistic. You know, it wasn't unbelievable. It's just, I'm not in that particular you know, demographic or culture, I can't relate one-to-one -to, -one to that, but most things across culture you can relate to, even if it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. It may not be, you know, an apples to apples comparison, but apples and oranges are both fruit, still a comparison that you can relate to in some way, you know? So sorry about the ridiculous metaphor there. <laughs> Needless to say, I really enjoyed Never Have I Ever, and I look forward to more of it. Um, let's see, I also watched uh, The Witcher. I had not seen season one. It was one of those shows that kind of slipped through the crack when everybody was talking about The Witcher. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch it. And then for some reason I didn't. And then the next thing I knew was like a year later. And I was like, well, dang, I guess I missed that boat. And then I didn't want to watch it because I didn't want to be like, ooh, I just watched The Witcher. And everybody was like, that was like last year. <laughs> But they just released season two of the which so it was a perfect opportunity with all this time on my hands to watch season one and season two and oh boy that show it was it was it was good I just out again my expectation I didn't I didn't read the books clearly me and my husband got into this debate because he kept talking about how it was based on a video game and I'm like it may have been based on a video game but that video game is based on a book anyway <laughs> um, I didn't play the video game or 
um, read the book, but I enjoyed the show. And so I liked all the monsters, um, all the you know magic and stuff. It gets very dark. It's very darker than I expected, but I mean, it's a, literally a show called The Witcher. So, you know, um, but yeah, just, you know, again, covering a lot of different themes, you know, fate and destiny and identity and um, stuff like that. And so um, good stuff. Um, I guess we'll have to wait another, you know, year or two or whatever for when, you know, the next season comes out. You know, I'm pretty sure COVID is the reason there was such a gap between season one and season two. You know, the kids on the show were kids in season one. And in season two, they were fully grown adults. And not that much time had passed. But they did, you know, explain that time had passed. But, you know, it was just like, ooh, that little boy is a grown man now. What happened? <laughs> COVID, that's what happened. But they kept the show going. I think it's great and uh, again not gonna be for everyone considering some of the content it's very dark gruesome gory graphic there's a lot going on and so if that's not your thing that's okay but if you're into sword and sorcery and all that kind of stuff then yeah yeah witcher all the way i think that's everything oh i did just finish the second season of dota <laughs> Is it Dota Dragon something or just Do whatever? Again, this is another anime um, and it does have dragons. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I have a thing for dragons. So not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that one, but um, very good season of that as well. And uh, yeah, so that is what I've been watching on Netflix. Whew, obviously, I've had so much time on my hands. I'm, I, this is, like I said, will not be repeated. Um, I will be going back into the office, um, not this week, but next week. I'm going to be getting more on a regular schedule, so I won't be binging as much stuff. But it was fun while it lasted. What did you think of anything that I've seen? Is there a hidden gem on Netflix you think I should check out? I did hear that a new season of Raising Dion is out. Plus, there is the season of um, Lost in Space that I totally forgot came out. Like, I knew it came out, but I forgot it came out. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it's been months. Why haven't I watched that yet? You know? But anyway, so <laughs> this is me rambling about what I've seen. Um, let me know what you think. And, guys, stay safe out there. Be blessed. <laughs>